Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Danielle Amasia, the Vice President of Product Marketing for Hancock Software. And alongside me today, I have Carlos Dantas, who is our lead engineer and um, helped engineer our new energy modeling app called Mint, which is the reason we are here to show you all today. Carlos, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. I'm uh, Carlos Dantas, uh, VP of Solution Engineering. Uh, manage basically the the translation of TRMs into into Mint. Um, putting, doing energy modeling, doing uh, savings calculations with uh, multiple fuels, those types of things. So, I'll stand by for questions, and if Daniel, if you have anything, just just let me know. Great, thanks, Carlos. Um, I see a lot of people are still coming in. Uh, I notice a, a lot of you are current Hancock users and many of you are not. So we have a combination today. Um, if you all can like become acquainted with the chat box or the question box, we'd love to hear your feedback as we show each of these. We'd like to really get your feedback on our new energy modeling app. Um, so let's get started. Um, if you would like to raise your hand and if you have a microphone, I'd be happy to do that too. Uh, I think how we'll run this is Carlos and I will show a part of the energy modeling app and then uh, we'll just ask for a little bit of feedback each time. So we'll go step by step. And the main objective is that you all are familiar with what's going on at Hancock as far as new energy modeling. First, to introduce like what Hancock does as far as energy modeling. Um, I'm going to bring up my iPad. If you're on these webinars before, you know I always use the iPad. But what is very unique with our new Mint app is that you can use any tablet or computer or laptop. Um, so if I wanted to install the app in my on my laptop and not carry an iPad, I can do that. Um, if I want to install it on Windows Surface, I can do that too. So it is cross-platform. Um, and then when I bring up my iPad here, you're going to see two icons that have to do with Hancock. Many of you are familiar, we have a mobile app already. It's DOE approved for energy modeling and it's called Heat, it's right here. Uh, this is found on the App Store via a private link. So if your state uses Heat, uh, we would redirect you to a private link to install the app. Now, we are in the mix of moving the energy modeling engine and calculations from Heat to Mint. So, Side by side, I have Hancock Heat and Hancock Mint. So the calculations are the same. They're the same DOE approved energy modeling calculations. We have a lot of state weatherization customers that are already DOE approved to use heat. And what we're doing from now is we're starting a process with each state to get DOE approved for using Mint. That's a process where the state enters the sample jobs and then DOE's consultant runs them through the Mint modeling engine to make sure that the calculations match heat. So that's the background of like why we offered this webinar today. Uh, this is a technical webinar. So if you are uh, interested in receiving Building Performance Institute P BPI continuing education credits, you can get those credits um, if you entered your number, your member number into the registration form. If you have any questions about that, just you're going to get my email with this recording afterwards. You can just reply to that email. Okay, so Mint, when I bring up the Mint app, it's a little bit of a different, very different interface, and we think you're going to like it better. So when I bring up the Mint app, I'm shown all the projects assigned to me as the Mint Auditor. So I have Mint Test and I have Boston Williams. Where does this come from? Let's tackle that first. This um, schedule comes from 
Hancock's online site. So if you use our backend, then you schedule the Boston Williams uh, site assessment here, and that triggers it to sync to your Mint device. Now we have customers that can um, that already have a tracking system. They don't want to use Hancock for everything. They just want to use our mobile app. And we now, Mint supports that way better than our previous Heat supported that. So if you are in a state or organization that just wants to add mobile, uh, we do have a project scheduled API here. So we can receive scheduled appointments and assign them right to the auditor. So your auditors actually never have to see the online site if that's the way that you decide you want to use Mint. Okay, so that's the introduction. Um, I'm gonna stop there and answer a question we get. Can you use a phone? Can you use an iPhone? Um, Carlos uses an iPhone for this app. It's not the best user experience. Um, it's not optimized, the screen display for the iPhone. So we definitely recommend the tablet or the laptop computer. Okay. So let me go back to the app. For this webinar, I have one um, that is brand new uh, audit, Boston Williams, and one that I have uh, spent time before this webinar entering all the data in, and that's called Mint Testing. So I wanna like introduce you to a fresh audit, but sometimes I think I will go back and reference this Mint Testing um, so you're not just watching me enter data. And I want you to get the sense of how this works. Uh, first of all, Boston Williams is assigned a funding source. We call this an allocation. They qualify for an allocation. So in my example, Boston Williams qualifies for 2023 DOE weatherization and a utility weatherization that I might have utility funding. So when I look at view project, the first thing I'm gonna see is a to-do list. And this to-do list is completely configurable by the programs you run. So if your utility has a separate data entry requirements, then your emergency heating repair, then DOE weatherization, then this to-do list will modify based on the program that the client is participating in or qualifying for. If you want him to qualify for everything, then you would set the to-do list to capture all the data you need. So the first difference between Mint, which you're seeing now, and our old app, Heat, is, the is how configurable it is. You will actually be able to tell us the all of the fields that your state or your organization wants to use and another you know another organization or state that uses hancock doesn't have to use those fields so it is completely configurable in that way and this to-do list is actually meant to be like a step-by-step -step checklist to tell your auditor your could be used like for workforce training to tell your auditor and force exactly what you need to complete a successful audit in your state. So you can see Boston here. I haven't done many things here. I just confirmed his address and stuff, and I did enter a blower door pretest. That's all I did. Versus if I go to the mint test here, I completed this entire audit beforehand. See how when I complete a section, it checks it off as completed. So you're gonna really make sure that you be, are able to go through your entire to-do list and the auditors don't forget or miss data. Okay, so the first thing you see is you confirm the audit information. And this comes from uh, the online site usually. And then the next to-do is that you need to confirm and collect building and utility information. So let's say I do that. Right when I do that, the required fields will show up in red. So there's no question of what is used in the energy model, 
versus what the program just wants to track separately. So right now I know that I have to enter the number of bedrooms. I have to enter the number of occupants. Carlos, can you tell us why am I entering, and I'm sure a lot of the auditors are gonna know what you're gonna say. What is this screen gonna do when I finish this required information? Um, that's a good question. And I was gonna say it on the screen before, but there's a lot of, um, not AI, but there's a lot of directive intelligence in the application, meaning, because you're answering specific questions, you're actually determining the characteristics of certain tests. In this case, from, from the building side, number of stories and, and area and the condition space of the building and how many people are in it, that all determines your ASHRAE ventilation targets, right? It'll give you the, the minimums and maximums. It, all of that information is hidden behind the scenes and used later. So when um, Danielle was in the to-do list, one of the cool things that everyone probably understand about this is, say you go into an HVHC system and you select a, a forced hot air. Well, the system knows that forced hot air needs ducts. So it's not gonna display any piping information. It's gonna make sure you go through the ducts. And once you go through the ducts, it's then gonna display duct tests, not, not anything else. So if you, if you have a forced hot water system, it'll simply put your piping system in there, put your piping characteristics in there and won't display any of the docs or any of the special tests that are associated with it. So there's a lot of that throughout the application. Does that make sense, Danielle? Is that? Yep. So you can see we're on our way to calculating the ASHRAE 62 to 2016 minimum required ventilation here. So that calculator is just built directly into the app. And if you are missing required information, you can just tap here and you can see the information you're missing. So we are missing the average ceiling height. Is that correct, and, Carlos? Yeah, and one of, you want, for, this, for this test, since it's in the report, why don't you go into the utility section and make sure you put the, um, the usage and cost, in, just put a cost in there. Okay. Okay. And at the bottom, at the bottom, it should tell you as well. We have these mint message systems, so mm -hmm. it'll tell you what's going on. So on both utilities. So did you put it on? Do we have gas, oil, and is it the same thing? Or just yeah? Is it in gas and electric? Yep. Okay. okay. Then go back. Go back in, and it should be. It should be set now. You Perfect, the required message. ventilation. Um, so then you get the sense that this to-do list, after you enter the and confirm the utility information, then you can go and start your step-by-step -step BPI guided audit. So we're gonna look at a blower door test. I have already entered a pretest here uh, just to save time. And that pretest has a CFM at 3000. When I enter multiple target or um, tests as I'm weatherizing, as I'm installing the measures, um, you can enter as many tests as you want. And you do that simply by adding a new test. And then, you know, you might wanna say, uh, let's say we're at the post test. And then you can enter the CFM at 50. So we let's say we got to a 1400 CFM reduction. And then when you're done that, it checks off as complete. So you really get a step-by-step -step checklist of what the auditor is doing as they're walking through the house. Let's look um, at a few of the subsystems in the house, starting with heating and cooling. Uh, Carlos, can you talk to us how this is dynamic for this house? In this house, to give you background, um, I have gas furnace. Go ahead. Okay. Um, one of the one of the challenges, um, and it's recent uh, that that we've been running into is you'll you'll see a lot of older systems that'll have heating and cooling, but now you can do fuel conversions into heat pumps. So it's a, it's a tricky scenario. So in this case, depending on whether you what heating type. So Danielle, change it from forced hot air to forced hot water, or Perfect. to okay. like a Before heat pump. Before I change that, sure. I want you all to see for a forced hot air system. You need the BTU output, the 
existing efficiency. So we show the required fields you need. But like Carlo says, when I change it to force tap water, go ahead. Yeah, you're going to get different scenarios. So uh, do air conditioning or cooling, for instance. It doesn't care. Cooling doesn't care about you know the the, the different fields. So right. you're going to get different different options for sear and things like that. So it it knows relative to the HVHC system. If you enter a, an air conditioner, wall air conditioner, and you enter a a boiler, and you want to replace that with a heat pump, you can do that specifically from this section. And then the savings calculations, which is the magic behind it will take into effect the cooling system and the heating system combined into the heat pump. So that kind of makes sense. Yes, which um, makes fuel switching so much easier because, you know, if you label this as a fuel switch, you know, then we're going to know what you're trying to do and present the required fields. And all this data at the end of the day goes into, gets gets compiled or mushed up into um, into a, a single set that gets pushed out to the modeling engine. So all the efficiencies, all the costs, um, all the savings calculations, the magic happens on the server side. Great. So let's take a look at the one we already um, finished for just the HVAC part. Um, and Carlos actually did this, audited this job, and he made it the most complicated house he could imagine. It has oil heat, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was testing some of the modeling calculations. Uh -huh. And then you but fuel I, switch to a heat pump? I, I did, but I don't know if I gave you that one because I didn't want to okay. go. No, you just so, replaced yeah. the oil. Yeah, yeah, I made it simpler. Yeah. Okay. So this is an example of a simple um, furnace replacement. So you see the existing oil furnace, and then you retrieve from an ECM list the recommended measure, and then you add the, all this information can pre-populate if you have the measure properties already. And along with that, you're going to see the ability to uh, take photos, for example. Um, you're gonna see the ability here, you know, so I can take a photo. Um, I can write a note here in my item info. I can take notes here. If auditors are loving this feature, you know, if you have a note that you reuse over and over and over again, you'll be able to save the last note and retrieve from that note every time. So if you have this like stock note that you use over and over again, you can save that last note and retrieve it um, every time. So that's the HVAC. And the really cool thing about this checklist is again, it responds based on the pick list within it. So when I um, switch to a central AC system, then you're gonna see different required fields. All right, let's look at um, let's look at some duct distribution. Uh, maybe I will. Let's say we're this this job is in Pennsylvania, so um, maybe we will add the cooling here. So let's say we add the central AC. Okay, and we'll just put it at a 12 sear for now. And then we wanna go, and Carlos, can you talk us through uh, duck improvements and the modeling behind the ducks? So. Yeah, so if you go and add an existing duck run, right? Not a ductless section, but. Right. Um, select the associated HVHC system. Mm -hmm. um, Go back to my, go back to mine. That should that should actually be filling in your HVHC systems. Yep. So. So in this mint test, when you yeah. go to the distribution ducts, yeah. you have selected. Um, yeah, you can go into one. You can still change it. So you can go do the same thing. Go into more on any of the existing, like the first run, return run test to to the mm -hmm. furnace. So my in this one, you have elected to do the pressure pan, right? 
Um, yeah, but that's separate. That's separate. So what this okay. is doing is you've identified the HVHC system, the the unit, right? So I said it's a I said it's a four star data. Then I said, okay, fine. I have some duct system. I have uh, duct runs. So I have my return and my supply, and I identify if select the uh, associated HVHC system. When you select that second drop down list, it's going to fill that in with whatever you have already selected. I've already used it, so it's not going to allow me to use it here. But if I had multiple systems that were using the same duct, or uh, I have multiple systems that had different duct systems, that's how you would identify it. And then again, return or, or supply, where it's located, you know, the drop down for the basement. You can have it in attics, you can have it in closets. All of these drop downs on the properties are specific to the energy modeling side. So they're gonna either you know, give you positives or negatives on that side, um, whether they're metal or not, the R values that exist. And then right, what, what Daniel is also showing, it was confusing to me, but when you look at the existing item, you then can add measures right from the existing item and they just flow like a, like a clipboard. So what you're looking at now is a measure that I selected on top of the duct to actually put some insulation on it. So when you're adding an existing item, you can actually select right at the bottom, there's a button that says add a measure. You can actually add as many different measures as you want to an existing scenario just by clicking that button and it'll just scroll. All, it'll just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll as many as you want to add. I do a lot with um, air infiltration stuff. You know, when you go through one, when you go through one reading, right? So you set up a test, you do one reading, you might go through and, and, and find some big things and, and, and take care of those. Then you run the test again, may do a couple more things, run the test again, and you can do the duct work, I mean the, uh, the blower doors test the exact same way. Keep adding measures, adding measures, and the system knows, goes back and it says, oh, this was the pre before you put all the measures in, and then this is the last one that you did, so I'm gonna take that as the post, and your target is always gonna be the ash rate. So, Perfect. Yeah. So let's say like what Carlos is saying is let's say you identify your existing supply run from the furnace and you want to add the R11 duct wrap to it. You fill out the supply information and then there's a select measure button at the bottom and, uh, where you can search for that R11 duct wrap and uh, improve or, you know, improve the duct situation. So that's the process of saying, hey, here's what's in the house and here's what I'm going to do to it. Okay, maybe we stop for a few questions now and we'll uh, get into energy savings and talk about some more built-in tests and health and safety because when I'm sharing my screen here, I can't see the questions. Um, okay. So let's start. Um, does Mint use the same login as the desktop version? I am getting an error when I log into the app. Um, Mint actually, yes, you use the same username and login and I'm gonna project the screen for you so you see how this works. However, when you go to account, um, there's a login, log out button, and you will have to type the URL. And the Mint URL does have a little bit different of a URL. So um, if you're having trouble logging into Mint, you can um, contact the onboarding manager or support and they can help you. Okay. Mint, this question is Mint the primary interface replacing Hancock? Um, so Mint is a way, and, and this is hard to describe, but Mint is a data collection app. It actually stands for mobile intake. So today's webinar is a data collection app for energy modeling, but Mint can be totally configurable if you energy model or not. So when you select this, you can configure the data collection in a step-by-step -step format. And if you wanted to do energy analysis, it can. Um, if you don't want it to do energy analysis, it doesn't have to. So that's Mint. Uh, our customers, our state customers that 
also use an app we have called Heat down here. And yes, the goal is Mint eventually is going to replace our Heat app. But Mint can be used for more because really it's any kind of data collection. Um, Alan put his BPI number in, and that's a great idea. You know, if you don't know if I have your BPI number, you can always put it in the chat. Okay, so there is um, a question from Angela. If you have information missing in the app, like a fuel source, can you edit that information in the app, or do you have to go back online to edit it? Um, and you can edit anything, you know, if there's information. You know, let's say utility information. Let's say I have, um, this is not a gas, get to the house. It's not gas, it's um, oil or something. You can always remove it and add oil. So yes, you can totally edit information. And then when you sync here, then that updated information pushes to Hancock's online cloud site. Okay. Is there an automated way to upload 12 months of gas and electric usage and costs, such as an upload button? Um, right now, there is an automated way through an API. So um, if you write to our API, then all that 12 months usage can come in. Okay, oftentimes the data plate information is unreadable. What suggestions do you have for inputting HVAC data in this case? I don't I don't have a suggestion, but I can ask Art, who is yes. our it's building It's normally scientist. the TRM type stuff, right? Depends on the state and the location. So some, yeah. some municipalities, they'll say, okay, you know, depending on the age, if you can determine it's over 20 years, the you know, efficiency might be boilerplate 77, things like that. So we have some customers, usually our utility customers, that won't do full house auditing. They'll do this um, technical resource calculations that's been studied. Um, so they'll default Hancock to that, but I'm not sure if you can't read the template. Okay. Good. Everybody gave me their BPI number. Okay. So let's keep going. Um, I'm going to take maybe 15 more minutes. I don't think there's much left um, when we really get into this energy savings. So what you've learned so far is infer the scheduled audit comes from the online site. Then it shows on the Mint app. And this Mint app is actually um, a DOE energy audit. And then it's also approved for... BPI 2400 standard, if you have any Homes Act funding that you're using, you must use a BPI 2400 compliant tool, which Mint is also. So it's really great for leveraging multiple funding sources for one project because the data collection changes based on which funding sources you're leveraging. And the whole basis of it is a check by, you know, step by step checklist. And then as this checklist goes through, uh, it gets checked off in green. And let's have a look, you know, other measure. You simply want to, maybe you want to do um, the vent. I just here. type them. They're, they're, there's no existing. So if you just want to type in the search, you can actually start seeing some of the ones that are in there. In here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, sorry. I know I just shut them off by default just so they wouldn't confuse people. So right. So there's the, like the bathroom fan replace. That's a common health and safety measure that you can add. And um, if it already has the information in it, it just defaults for you. You can type a note by speaking into it. And then you can save that note even, and you can reuse it later. And also there's okay. a lot of information behind that too. Meaning you're just saying a small amount of information because you're at Mint. 
but the program managers can set the costs, can set the savings, the savings percentage, everything. So there's a lot of things you're not seeing there, Danielle, when you when you open up the, the measure, you're just seeing some basic information, but there's a lot more on the cloud side that gets pulled down. Right. Like lifetime and things like that. Then all the things that are gonna affect the SIR. And what this um, example job also doesn't have is like, I think, maybe we can do it, electronic signatures. So if you need your client to sign a usage release form, permission form, whatever, um, it's right in Mint and we can put that your forms in there for you. So let's talk about the final SIR energy modeling report. After you fill out the energy savings checklist here, then you're, you're able to run the energy modeling report. And what this is, it gives you um, Carlos, what happened? I just ran that a second ago. Yeah. It's saying Mint's not giving it data. Oh. It gives you an SIR report that lists every uh, measure that you've done and cool. the projected energy savings, MMBTU savings. So we convert the gas electric to MMBTU savings and we give you an SIR report for each uh, section. And then when you're ready, you can go back and you can um, mark the project as finished up here if you don't want it to stay on your Mint device. And then you sync it back to the online site. So this is a little different in our existing app. It, you always have to get it off your device. But in this version, you have the option to mark it as um, done or keep it on your app to work on in the future. So if you had any electronic documents that you signed, they would be listed here and you could see the customer sign them electronically. And we make, and we make PDFs in here too. So I think what's happening is your reflectors is not allowing you to go back. You can, you can kill the job and pull it back down if you want, but um, you can also, okay. once you pull up the reports, you can actually save the reports locally in Mint as PDFs and then sign them, do whatever you want, and then push them back up to the cloud. So you can do a lot of things offline with Mint. Uh, it's not Mint like a lot of systems you'll have, they're just they're just websites, right, that you're always connected to. Mint's not set up like that. Mint's set up to be uh, we, originally commercially, right? So you go into a big high rise building, you might not have internet access. You sync, you pull down all the relevant data from all the catalogs, all the information, and then you can build it, and when you're ready, when you have internet access again, you go back to Wi-Fi, you hook onto your cellular, you tether it, you press sync, pushes your data back up to the cloud. Great, so now um, to show you that SIR report, when you go to the modeling report, you select it and then um, it calculates. And Carlos, this part does need Wi-Fi connection, this SIR calculation. Yeah, that's the, the modeling engine's used by both. Uh, it's actually the same one used in heat and it's used in the cloud. So that's mm -hmm. the DOE certified. So right now what you're doing is you're sending the data not to the cloud server, but to the modeling server. And the modeling server is creating a report and giving that back down to you. Perfect, so we're gonna go through this report. It's gonna be very familiar to you if you use our other app, Heat. Uh, we kind of timestamp the date and time give you the heating and cooling degree days that you chose, make that visible. Um, we show you the overall job SIR, uh, the lifetime and the annual savings over that lifetime. And then this is uh, the architectural design loads using uh, manual J calculation. Uh, so you will be able to see if the preheating and cooling is sized correctly versus the post. And then we get into the measure by measure energy savings. So these are um, listed by energy efficiency payback value that are listed in that order. In DOE, they assume the measure before is installed, becomes an existing condition when the next measure um, evaluates through the calculations. So you'll see that you know the lighting is the most payback here and we did duct installation and everything else. 
If you have other measures that you want included in the SAR, you have a section for that. Health and safety measures are not, so that's in a separate section. Then you can separately look at your baseload usage and savings, uh, kilowatt hours versus um, hot water, which would be therms in this case. And then this system fuel, it's a good way to see the breakdown um, of fuels. You know, Carlos entered a complicated case. He entered an oil heater, a natural gas hot water heater, and electric baseload. And you can see by that fuel, the breakdown of what was modeled versus um, before versus after versus actual. So that means what you entered in Hancock as the actual usage compared to what is the modeled pre-usage. And that's a great manual check by an auditor to say, uh, is my pre-usage correct, the actual usage? Do I need to modify it? Is my model correct, my inputs for existing conditions? So this is a great grid that shows what is actual versus modeled. And then what that variance percentage would be in the savings. And then you see um, the breakdown of um, electric usage and then all of the architectural loads. So this is a consumption, architectural section, and solar heat gain loads. So this is all, um, when DOE reviews this, they make sure like this matches our heat app and it's very similar in the report. Uh, and Carlos had this concept, he said, you can save PDFs within Mint. And what that means is if you want to timestamp, okay, this is the SIR report, you don't want to keep regenerating it. This is the report in time. You can go here and save this. And we will convert this to a PDF file for you. And then um, when you sync back, it syncs the PDF. So you can view oh, it right here. That's not going to look pretty. It's going to look like uh, it's going to look cut off a little bit because we're working on that, making that look pretty. So it's formatted nice. properly. And, then... and just so you can think, like it doesn't have to be the energy savings report only. It can be any electronic signature that you need from the customer or any um, calculator. You know, the refrigerator calculator sheet. I know the state of California has to fill that out. Like anything like that, um, we can generate that PDF and save it. And when you sync back, it goes back to the online site. So the highlights here are um, really the config, the ability for this thing to be configured to your programs. And it's configured very quickly. Um, and then the other highlights are photos, right? So you can take photos at the house level. You could never do that before. You can take photos at the section level. So if I wanna go into basement here, and just uh, take some photos here. I can take photos at the section level down here or the measure level. Um, and then notes, if you reuse and you really want to move forward quickly through uh, energy audit, you can reuse contractor notes here. So you can go there's and you do that. There's a couple questions too, Danielle, sorry. Yep. So you save notes and then you can retrieve those notes here. Okay. I see a lot of EPI numbers and I'm sorry, and I'm looking at the window and door section. Okay. So to do that, we add. Can you walls. repeat the question so everybody knows? Sure. Can you show and go over the window and door section? Okay. That was from Ken. Perfect. Go ahead. So how we do that is we enter, you can go back, yeah, we enter some walls. So the first thing, put the walls in. So I made... Uh, mm -hmm. Let me get the walls. Go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. So you can see I had I have my walls, right? So I had, uh, up, I just did two quick ones, upstairs, west wall, north wall side. And you can click more info so you can see what we collect on that. All right, um, so and let's again, look at the north side wall that Carlos entered. This is 15 by 20. You even put some shading in there, 15% shaded. Go ahead. 
So, and all the other characteristics I saw from the other from the other questions, the labor costs, uh, individual material prices, all that stuff is back in the cloud side. And we can look at that later, or I, I know you have other webinars on that, but that's all on the back of the cloud side and it can be modified and it's all tailored to your program. So nothing's fixed here and it's not a compiled piece of code. So if you say, I wanna onboard with this configuration, with this rule set, that's what we do. And you can change your rule set over time without disturbing the application or having to re-download it and such. So, and once, go back to the walls. Once I have my existing walls in, now you can go back and you can add in doors and windows. So if you go to the doors and windows, and when you look at the doors and windows, it has the same exact um, intelligence in it. So it will ask you, it'll say, okay, which window section is it? Okay, it's the north side window section. What type of windows are there? And then you can you can see if you scroll down, I actually probably put some measures to replace. Oh, I didn't. Oh. You can put you can add uh, replacement measures for the uh, for the each each of the windows that are in there, or do you know you can be as simple as making it one wall um, with one set of characteristics. But I, I try to go more granular for the SIRs because the the orientation and the shading of the walls does does affect it. Um, Perfect. Again, so today's energy modeling, but you know, if you don't energy model and you just want mobile data collection with energy analysis, like estimated savings, um, we can configure your Mint to do that. Um, oh, the other thing, show them this really quick, Danielle. Go, and I'm looking at the questions. Go back into Mint, into the energy modeling report, but don't run it. Okay. There, there's a question about how does the software calculate the SRR, and I know the guys and everybody, SR, everybody loves this once I show it to them. Um, so that, you know, this hidden calculation thing? Yes. So, so, so you what, want me what, to go into the modeling report, right? Yeah, don't go into, don't run the modeling report right there, right there. So, oh, did it again. You have to go back out and back in. Um, so what we did is over over time with Hancock, a number of our customers get to a point where we have these complicated savings calculations across multiple different, you know, the envelope versus equipment. And it's difficult to see how the final result was derived a lot of times. Even if you have multiple spreadsheets and you're you're running your spreadsheets and you're, you're off by a small percentage. So what we ended up doing is on our finalized report on that, usually it was on the customer proposals, right? Um, but we've done it on the finalized reports. Don't generate I'm gonna the I'm going to click this gray yeah. secret exactly. here. Click here to see the calculations pretty much, right? Right. What this is now showing you is the interim calculation. So there's a lot of times where Mint is taking two values for like efficiency and deriving some other number. And you don't really get to see that number. Well, with this, you actually can see that. And, we can, and I've gone through many hours where I've used my calculator with the project manager and said, okay, so that's why your percentage is off by two decimal points because we're going to six decimal points or something like that. So this this is just a simple way of letting somebody take a look at what we're using for calculations and making sure if the numbers aren't matching or something's way off. Um, oh, okay, I get it. I put in 22, 22 feet for the duct run instead of two feet, or I put 22 for the width of it versus two. Perfect. Um, that that's helps. so helpful because everybody always wonders like why am what's being used right in the SIR calculation and this shows each measure and all the components that are being used yeah the only thing it doesn't show in there is weatherization i'm uh, not weatherization location right so there's there's mm -hmm. a huge weather table that does every month every you know sun the sun the sun orientation um, the average temperatures, things like that. And those all go into the calculations. Those aren't displayed in Mint. Perfect. So that asks a lot of the SIR questions. Okay. So I think we have, um, I think we've covered everything. Thank you guys for your attention. Uh, we'll run these because I know everybody values those BPI credits. So we'll run these once a month. And um, if you're on my list, if you want to get on my list, just reply to the email. I recorded it, so I will send this out to everybody that signed up, even if you didn't attend.
Thank you so much for your attention, Carlos, and I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. Have a good day.